Hey everyone, I'm sitting down with Jessica Pinsky today, Policy Director for Captains for Clean Water. And today we're gonna to be talking about the importance of federal funding when it comes to Everglades restoration. So it may, may seem pretty obvious, you know, anything restoration, anything in the world really needs money to help it advance. Um, and in the world of Everglades restoration, why is funding such a critical piece in moving all these projects forward? I think if we start by explaining uh, that Everglades restoration is governed by a plan uh, known as SERP. Uh, SERP stands for Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan. Um, SERP was enacted in 2000 uh, by Congress. It is the plan that governs governs Everglades restoration. It's a suite of 68 pro projects, um, infrastructure projects that combine and work together to, to move water south in, in the way that uh, the flow path of the Everglades used to be. Um, it it kind of mimics that uh, historical flow path and, and moving water south to uh, the Everglades and Florida Bay. Um, SERP is a 50-50 cost share between the federal government and the state government. So every year through the annual appropriations cycle, the state and federal government um, both allocate funds towards Re Everglades restoration to, to build and uh, advance these projects. And uh, I'll give you an example. Um, currently, um, the, the EAA Reservoir, which is known as the Everglades Agricultural Area Reservoir Project. Um, huge project, provides tremendous benefits to, to both coast of Florida as well as, as the Everglades. Um, that project, uh, the federal government is building the actual reservoir, the state government is building the STA, the storage and treatment area. And so that's an example of how the state and federal government work together to advance Everglades restoration. So it's clear we need both funding from both the federal side and the state side. So why right now are we making this federal funding push? Uh, well, you know, right now we need 725 million to keep pace with that project schedule that CERT lays out called you know, the integrated delivery schedule. Um, that's our ask, that's what we need. You know, I'd, I'd like to highlight also that, you know, there was a study uh, that the uh, Everglades Foundation commissioned that showed for every, you know, one dollar that we invest in Everglades restoration, we get, you know, four dollars back to the economy. That's, a, you know, that's quite a return on investment. The amount that we're asking for you know, is a drop in the bucket compared to what a healthy Everglades economy produces. You know, those, as you know, Florida, you know, outdoor recreation, we are the outdoor recreation state, you know, boating and fishing capital of, of the United States. And a healthy, restored Everglades just generates more tourism, um, you know, outdoor recreation dollars for our economy. We're experiencing incredible momentum in the past few years um, since uh, that EAA reservoir project that we spoke of, which uh, we like to refer to it as the heart of Everglades restoration. That project, uh, you know, was, was really, it, it's been envisioned in CERT for a while, but uh, it was really kicked off in 2017 by a, a state bill uh, known as SB10, which kind of started this whole process. But getting that reservoir completed uh, and, and implemented, which is in critically important to both coasts of Florida, like I said, and, and moving water south, um, that requires that 50-50 partnership between the state and federal government. And keeping that funding at a consistent level so we can advance these projects is critical. That's why we have a dedicated amount that we're asking for from the feds, a dedicated amount that we're asking for from the state. And just to keep this momentum that we've had uh, 
have experienced, especially in the past few years, to keep that going strong. And what, hap what would happen if we don't get the money that we're asking for from the federal government? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, there have been, you know, that can cause delays um, in the project, which would mean that the project's uh, timeline is further completed out. And the, and the longer those delays, the, the more, you know, actually, it's the more damage we're doing um, to both coasts. I mean, this and the Everglades. I mean, we need to get that project finished uh, to send that water south and, you know, s help to minimize those discharges to the coast. But also, you know, it's, it's also a cost of construction. You know, as time goes by, cost of, you know, the cost of construction increases. And, you know, what we can build it for today, obviously, it's more expensive next year, the year after that. So as quickly as we can get these projects um, implemented, then it's, you know, the most cost effective in providing relief to, you know, the majority of residents of South Florida. Gotcha. And so if we're asking for just this federal piece, does that mean we've already received the amount from the state that we wanted? Or, you know, how does, is that budget already out? How does that work? Um, actually, uh, the state appropriations process is going on, you know, right now. And uh, we have, you know, in both the House and the Senate budgets at the state level, you know, there there is adequate funding. Of course, we'd always like to have more, but I mean, there is adequate funding, and we have had tremendous, um, you know, uh, funding levels, historic levels, you know, from the state government in the past few years, the federal government as well. But um, you know, we need to keep that momentum and keep those, you know, historic funding levels. We need to continue that. So we've talked about how you know you need both both sides of funding, the federal side of funding and the state funding, to really make these projects come to life. Um, is that ever difficult at times, considering you know the political climate with different opposing sides on the political spectrum there, or how does how does that work? Good question. You know, the great thing about Everglades restoration, which once completed, it's the largest restoration project in the world and will be used as a shining example of, you know, how we can fix other systems. Um, the great thing about it is, is it's a bipartisan issue. <clears throat> We've had support from every member of Florida's congressional delegation. Um, as you know, you know, no matter different, uh, you know, different party, uh, ruling parties in the state level and uh, at the federal level, it doesn't matter. This is an issue that everyone can unite behind. Um, it's, it's nonpartisan, it's, you know, it's bipartisan. Um, it, it's something that, it's a win-win for everyone. So then how does, how does Captains for Clean Water fit into this, this funding piece? Uh, yeah, let's talk about Captains for Clean Water for a second, because I think uh, what Captains has done in this Everglades movement is that they've been able to unite all these brands, all these tourism-related businesses, recreational anglers, you know, fishing guides, boat captains, everyone, coastal residents, residents, interior residents, residents from all over the state, people that come and recreate in the state of Florida. Um, Everyone, they've united them and they're moving them. You know, they have created that groundswell that's moving them. We recently, in this, you know, latest appropriation cycle, most recently, we did a uh, outdoor industry sign-on letter. We had over 25 brands, well-known household brands, participate in this letter. I mean, that's tremendous engagement from these brands who were unified, you know, and sent a, this letter to Congress asking them to appropriate $725 million because it's, everyone realizes that this restoring the Everglades creates, you know, it, it affects everyone. The economic impact, the ecological impact, environmental impact, it, it affects everyone in some way. Um, you know, whether you, you know, your property values, real estate, tourism, everyone is affected. 
you know, what's interesting and what it's interesting and it's great too, is that a lot of these brands are direct competitors with each other, but they can unify and unite on this issue. Um, this, like we spoke about at the, you know, how it is a bipartisan issue. You know, we also have these competitors, you know, in, in, in the outdoor industry coming together and uniting, you know, to push forward on Everglades restoration in advance because everyone understands what a tremendous impact this has on our economy and our way of life. Also, um, right now, in addition to that outdoor industry sign-on letter, we also are giving all of our Captains for Clean Water members and supporters a way to sign on so that they can show their help individually. Um, we have a petition. You can find that petition at www.captainsforcleanwater.org. Um, sign the petition in support of uh, congressional funding for Everglades restoration. That is very important. It can show how you may not think that your voice matters, but your voice combined with many others, it does matter. And Captain's is a tried and true case study. We can point to previous success that we've had. Your voice does matter. You know, your voice combined with you know, all of those other voices, it creates the groundswell that moves this issue forward.